following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Let's go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, Brian Broaddus, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Thursday, May 25th, 2023, season 19, episode number eight. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break. We're live from SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We're center, presented by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. Today, we continue our off-season review. Uh, the conversation will be focused around the positions of linebacker and running back. And my hope is that today, uh, my co-host can stick to the script, and uh, we'll focus on those Why positions. are you even looking at me when you say that? Look at I Brian. Not, no, not, look at Nick. I was, I was literally looking around the room I at switched. each one of you. Was, no, you were staring no, wait, wait, at me. I couldn't make, I I could I make eye contact. That's exactly it. What I was trying to do, I was trying to get eye contact with everybody. No, everybody over was, here was looking down. Amber was the only one looking fault. at me, so that's the only one who I got eye contact. It was your I, fault, really. How was it my fault? Because nobody, Dak's success doesn't ha- have really anything to do with the linebackers. It does with the offensive line. So it's a flowing conversation to talk about yeah, but the offensive the problem. line. Here's the problem. If you say that, Dak's success also has something to do with the running backs, also has something to do with the wide receivers, also has something yeah. to do with the tight ends. So you really can't split it up and just Not have— Not linebacker, though. So. No, but that was also a point. That was for a reason because oh. I knew that those other positions— Like you, the st- like the, the quarterback of the defense is the yeah, linebacker? Yeah, yeah there was just, a method to it, Nick. There was a method to I it. I get it. You just didn't get the memo. I'm sorry. You didn't read your email. That I'm kicking sure. situation's a mess, isn't it, Nick? <laughs> sure is. <laughs> Are we going to get to that at some point? I don't even know if we're going to get that position. Um, you know what? Before we get to those positions, though, I do want to talk about OTAs. They started up this week. Today will be the first day that the media gets an opportunity yeah. to take a look. Uh, what will you guys be looking for? Is there anything that you look for for OTAs? Yeah, we had a mailbag question this morning, and uh, I hope I posted it right. But um, <laughs> Jalen Tolbert is the guy that I'm thinking. You know, he's saying all the right things this year. You know, this off season, I want to get better. I, I know last year was was not a good season at all, and so he's saying it right now is the time to, to show. Oh, you know, the the stuff in the in the backyard is working, and you are taking that next uh, uh, step. And so, and also as I pointed out too, it's hard to to get an evaluation of practice with no pads so the guys that catch it the guys that throw it man the guys that you and i used it. to work together we used to do that all the time well, you get, you can do it and also you also have the tape so you can know the defensive yeah. tackles and where they're lying and all this stuff but when you're standing on the side yeah. 150 yards away you're and like he, did he catch it did he not that pass looked terrible you know those are the yeah. things you can evaluate well and also a lot of the times you as someone who's watching but not really in the rooms with the coaches or anything you don't really know what exactly they're asking for for each guy. So something might look off to us and we're like over here criticizing, but that might be what the coach asked him to do. So we don't, So it's just a tough time to really start analyzing and, and evaluating players from our perspective. But it will be good to see how those guys look all together as a team, seeing the, the rookies with the veterans and seeing them, the most you can watch really from my end, who's catching a pass? Who caught a pass? Okay, good. Oh, that guy ran fast. Those type of things. So we'll see. Yeah, I, I, I took great pride, by the way, in making those practices sound like they were Super right. Bowl practices. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> Scouts doing, notebook. We had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah. Uh, I really, really did. Uh, I'm looking for where guys are going to line up. You know, you might not be able – yeah, you talk about you could see the passes and where they're going and maybe who's moving around well, who looks athletic, who looks quick. Uh, you maybe see different body types like, oh, this guy looked different. I'm starting to hear things that Neville Gallimore's taking things a little bit more seriously now. And so body different, you know, people looking different. I'm like, oh, look, it looks like, well, let's go. Got a little more bulk to him, you know. Oh, hey. Well, you know that uh, you know Vaughn. He doesn't look as small as I thought he might look in person. You know that kind of thing. So, you could get the visual of how the players fit your eye, but you could also get an idea of like, okay, wait, they're playing Vahoko, uh, the tackle or end at tackle, and oh wait, who's going at left guard at, with the number twos? 
so you can kind of get an idea of how this thing might ramp up when we get to Oxnard on the 25th of July. You, you know, I was with you on all the other stuff except for the um, Deuce Vaughn. So I interviewed him right when Look short. the first day he got here. And, <laughs> and I get it. I'm taller than most. But, but I'm interviewing him, and I'm thinking, all right. I mean, this, this, this is going to be all right. You know, yeah. like, he's not that short. I mean, he's okay, you know, yeah. helmet like But, I mean, whatever, yeah. you know. And then he goes over here and does an interview with, uh, I think, our social media team. I kind of looked at his shoes. This guy's got, like, the Nike Air Max to the fullest. I mean, there's, got like, pumped up. Th- this, like, this much. I mean, it's probably, Walk like, clouds. Th- yeah. yeah, it yeah. was. It, he was up there. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, these are, like, heels it's for, no, for it's, Nike. <laughs> it's no worse than what how if you've watched videos of, like, Bryce Young with Carolina. Yeah. He looks like he is a middle school kid playing football, yeah. and and you're and you're kind of like, man, he looked that bad. It must have been that crimson he, he was must wearing. Be that, so smart. <laughs> that teal doesn't yeah, teal so doesn't smart. make him look too tall. I mean, there's something about him. I mean, he must be like really. Oh, really he, is, he is. Well, yeah. I mean, you watched him play. I mean, yeah, he, yeah. he can ball. Well, like, he's Derek good. could tell you, like, yeah. he, he, they lost a game just because, because of him. Because everybody else was like just not du- on their game. Ducks that day. the sack, yeah. moves around. Oh yeah, was, they, yeah, I, yeah. It was twenty-eight nothing Alabama when I was there. I'm like, why did I pick this game? This is yeah. terrible. He gets hurt, and then it's twenty-eight twenty-three, and I'm yeah. like, this guy should win the Heisman yeah. because this is how different he can they ball, are. man. Yeah. You can say whatever you want about all of those uh, yeah, tangibles and measurables mm-hmm. and all that stuff, and we play him ball. We'll, we'll see them right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Carolina comes here. No, we go there. No, we go, go there. there. We go there. That's, I don't remember when that is in the season, but he'll probably be finding his groove as rookie quarterback. I think it's after the bye or sometime after a couple weeks after oh, the bye. Oh, I think it's right before Thanksgiving. There you I think go. that's it. There you so. go. One of the uh, the things that I think a lot of teams, and I'm talking about around the league, a lot of media people during this time of year, they go out to the OTAs, and one of the things they're looking for is who's not there mm-hmm. because this is a time when these are voluntary workouts, mm-hmm. and it's time sometimes that players take the opportunity to be able to flex their muscle a little bit on, I'm not so happy with my contract, or I want to do, I want to see something different, and that's their way to be able to speak to the organization. Are there, the, are there any of those types of things that you guys are maybe expecting to be coming up here with some guys? guys that are going to be up for contracts here in the future, that this may be their opportunity to make yeah. those kinds of statements. Yeah, I mean, this is when Darren Hambrick's name gets mentioned yeah. every year about what, what do, do voluntary, voluntary mean? mean because I couldn't remember which Hambrick it, it was, was on Darren, the radio the other day. Darren, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and, and it's because they, this is the reason why they, they call it voluntary, because he's not there, and then somebody's going to go ask the PR staff, and they're going to get kind of snarky about it, and they're going to say it's voluntary, you know, like he was here yesterday or that, some, that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. It's not until the mini camp can you really find out, oh, like, like, for instance, I don't know this, but like Trayvon Diggs, he's not here, or CD or Micah Parsons or whoever, I, I'm not because sure. Because it's not voluntary yeah. once you get to that point. Right. Yeah. I have seen some photographs, though. We, we take some photos and we throw some stuff out. I've seen some CD, and I've, I think I've seen Micah Parsons. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen anybody else, though. I haven't seen any other cornerback. We'll see. We'll see what happens with Diggs. Diggs, you know, Diggs works out with his brother and did it all last year, too, and then he shows up on the days that he needs to, to you know, be here. That's actually becoming, a, I, I think, a more common thing across the NFL. You see these guys that across the league will get together and work out, yeah. like teams from guys from different teams, and, and they're, they're working out in the offseason. They have their own special trainers right. that, that prepare them for the season. It seems like that's becoming more of a normal thing than, than teams always just working out just with their own team. Yeah, I, I you know, I'll give you my reason why I think a guy like Micah Parsons was down in Austin working out. And, and nothing against the strength program here with the Cowboys do a fine job. But when you work, Micah is probably looking for individual one-on-one training. You know, when you get the training staff here, you got, what, three, four coaches. There's a group of guys, maybe 30, 40 guys. You don't get the individual, hey, the power clean you're doing there is the right way. Hey, that's a really good hand clean you're doing there. Oh, hey, the bench press. You know, when you go on your own and do these things, you you feel comfortable. It's not that they have anything against what's going on. It's a lot about being, you know, specialized, uh, you know, uh, teaching. You know, and a lot of these guys do that just because they feel – comfortable that they're getting that hands-on one-on-one that maybe they don't always get when you're when you got a a room full of guys and these strength coaches are having to work the room to make sure that everybody's getting their the proper uh, techniques and stuff you think Jerry's listening? Because if Jerry was listening to that, he'd be like, "Oh, Michael, you want a guy? I'll I'll get you a guy." Well, you know, but that's, you know, <laughs> but you can't do that for everyone. Yeah, but that's but I think maybe you could for they him. cut down well, on their 
coaching staff roster this year. It was like twenty nine to twenty. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. And you know, and, and trust me, I, 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 one of the one of maybe one of the darkest days for Cowboys employees is when Jerry Jones was in the Hall of Fame and he flew over. We were all lined up out there, and I'm, oh, think, yeah. I'm thinking, he goes. I pay all those people. Yeah. <laughs> These are all, all in place. We're all lined up a hundred <laughs> yards too deep, and he's walking through, going, "Okay, okay, okay." No, I'm just, I'm just kidding there. But seriously, I mean, <laughs> I'm kidding, but I'm thinking Jerry's flying in. He's going, "Wow, I pay all those people." Yeah, huh? people. You look at HR like, "Was this a good idea? Yeah, Should I, we have I, shown I, him I, all I, the people that he pays?" I was at standing one time? next to Robert Blackwell, the video director at the time, and I'm like, "Man, this is a terrible idea." I, just, I go, "Whoever came up with this idea, maybe we need to rethink this a little bit because Jerry's going to walk through us and go." Half these people don't need to be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we appreciate you guys. We're going to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to jump right into our 2023 offseason review. We're going to talk about linebackers when we come back. Lots of interesting Defensive names line. and topics there. <laughs> we'll do that when we come back. DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Hey, honey, can we talk? Of course. What's up? Well, I just thought you should know. I've been curious about the new Dr. Pepper strawberries and cream. <gasps> Have you felt this way a long time? No, I just think I'd really like the taste of Dr. Pepper swirled with layers of flavor. If you feel that way, I think you should try it, babe. It's amazing. I mean, you're amazing, too. <laughs> new Dr. Pepper Strawberries and Cream, the new flavor you deserve. Want to use the Cowboys locker room's favorite products? Check out the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Playmaker, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The Playmaker includes four Jack Black skincare favorites, plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word cowboys. The Jack Black Playmaker, 10 bucks, free shipping. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yokiero, Yokiero guacamole. Back to the break. Register now for 2023 Dallas Cowboys Youth Camps. Presented by Invisalign, athletes ages 6 to 16 are invited to learn from the best this summer at AT AT&T Stadium or Ford Center. For, let's see, it's led by former NFL players. I'm trying to condense this down, guys. Sorry. Uh, You can use the code CAMPS23 to get $25 off registration. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash CAMPS. Welcome back. It is the second segment of the break. We are live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star, and this segment is presented by Blockchain.com. Let us talk about the linebacker position. Uh, Not a lot has changed. (laughs) Not not a lot has changed. Uh, about this position, but I'd play Parsons at defensive end is what I. Would. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There we go. Jump right in. <laughs> there we go. You, I can, was go to the, go to you can go to the kiddie pool and you can uh, kind of yeah. go in, or you can just say right here in the cannonball. Fit in, that jump that, in that overshown. That here overshown. He needs to play edge. All right, here we go. That, honestly, that was going <laughs> okay, to be my I, second no, question, I, but I, we're going to jump right in since one? you brought it up. No, no let's let's jump into that one. Uh, <laughs> is is that the best idea? We we. Honestly, I think a lot has been made about the whole idea that Michael Parsons is going yeah. to be like the report that he's supposed to be playing more defensive end. I'm like, he's a defensive end. If you've been watching the Cowboys mm-hmm. play, yeah. he's not a linebacker anymore. But that's kind of the, the report is that now he's going to be really devoted to being a defensive end. My question for you guys, is that the best move for the linebacker position of this team? Should he be more of a hybrid that does both? Or do you think it's the right move for him to be more exclusively a defensive end? I don't worry about him as much for what you're trying to say, because I think we know what he's going to do. 
the, the, the focus for me, and I'll take it back to the linebackers, is what's going to happen with Clark, what's going to happen with Cox, Harper, Overshone, you know, Isaiah Land is another guy that they really, really like that they, you know, from the college free agency pool. So that to me is my focus. Wherever Micah Parsons plays, I'm going to be fine. I'm not going to worry about him as an edge. I'm not going to worry about him as a linebacker. I'm not going to worry about Van Der Esch. It's those others that I need to step up. That, that to me, is where this, this group is either going to make or break with Clark, Cox, Overshone, Harper, Land, guys like that. Yeah, for, for me, it's him just being flexible enough to play different positions and not get neutralized in, in the times where – I felt like the Eagles kind of had a had a good read on him. He didn't have his best games there. Um, the play, um, not play action, but the uh, read options from the quarterbacks, those running quarterbacks, freeze him, freeze him, yeah. and, and and that's where I think that that's got to be an issue there. That there's some offenses that really key on him, and and I think it's just important. So whatever he is, linebacker, defensive end, whatever, he's got to be able to flip sides. And when he does that, the guys that he that Brian's talking about, the the other linebackers and the other defensive ends have got to be able to be just as flexible as well. Well, I think it's all about where are you the most effective. And I think that so far, Micah has proven to be the most effective as uh, just rushing the passer and, and working in that in the in the defensive line. But it does, it does help to have that kind of flexibility because you never know who's going to get injured, what linebacker is going to get injured. You never know at what time you do need to move a guy like him back to linebacker and, and just work that part of the field more. And also, depending on what kind of offenses are you facing for that specific week. So I think it'll help. But at the end of the day, it tells you a lot. And and I know Dan Quinn came out and said, no, he, we're going to keep doing what we've been doing or whatever. But if Micah Parson himself told you he's working on his weight and his body, I think that gives you a very, very clear and good indicator what he's going to be doing the most this year. I was actually happy to hear him say that just because I felt like as the season wore on, it felt like it not not knowing exactly what his body was like, but it did feel like watching him, he had a little less juice. Yeah. And it made me wonder if guys leaning on him mm -hmm. at his size was starting to wear on him. And so I really want him. If you're going to be a defensive end, got to bulk him up, I think, a little bit. Don't want to take away his speed and his ability to get around that edge, but I do think he's going to have to have a little more weight if he's going to hold up for a career yeah. uh, rather than just kind of be a, a flash as, as the season goes you on. You know, I, I kind of feel like, though, that his as great as he is at defensive end, how much they use him at defensive end might be affected if all of a sudden Sam Williams and mm -hmm. some of these real, these edges, these true edges – show up all of a sudden it's like man we can't afford not to have sam williams mm -hmm. on the field we can't afford not and dorrance armstrong had a nice kind of a little breakout year for him but you know the if, if some of these edges show up and all of a sudden they're rushing the pass and they've got to get them on the field i mean you talk about maybe some of the nickel is you know taking one of the the one technique or that you know that defense of that nose off the field putting tank inside now putting another edge you know you got you got ways of mix and matching but how much how much Micah Parsons maybe plays at edge might be directly affected by how good Sam Williams and others play uh, when they get an opportunity I think if you go through every team in the league and you say all right who led your team in tackles for loss I bet you no other team the guy played ranked 15th in stat in uh, snaps. So Sam Williams yeah. mm -hmm. was 15th in overall defensive snaps, led the team in tackles for loss. That right there shows he's got to get on the field more. He's right. got to play now. Now some of that's on him. It's not just you can't just say to the coaches and say, "Well, what are they playing him?" Yeah. He's got to figure out that he's in the right spot because sometimes he plays in those fourth quarters when the Cowboys were winning. You saw some of those where just go rush the quarterback, go make plays, and he did, and he kind of poured it on on some of those games. There's two things that could affect Sam Williams going forward: is that he has to play in better control of himself. He plays to the echo of the whistle at times. You know, yeah. there's some shots. <laughs> that he took that you're like going, yeah. oh, bro, you can't take that, you can't do that. But there also need to be some maturity factors too, yeah. you know. And you know, and I think that if Sam Williams can control those two things in his life, 
you're going to be talking about a guy that is going to be a, 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 a big part of what this defense does this year. All right, I'm going to move us back to linebacker. Let's talk about <laughs> Damone Clark. Um, Damone Clark, he is – last year he was a guy that, that I don't think most – at the time he was drafted, most didn't think he would play last year. He was able to rehab from from the surgery. He was able to get onto the field. And he had some moments where he at least yeah. showed you something that made you think, mm, may have something with this guy. Where do you guys think he is right now at this point in his development? And what are you expecting from him this year as presumably the second linebacker behind LVE? Well, I owe everybody an apology about him. Because when he started playing, you watched him at LSU and there was some – rare ability with the size ability to close the hit, run hit factors and stuff like that here's a guy that was coming off some major back surgery I didn't think he was going to play but I, I know I talked him up because I'd seen him play a ton at LSU and I was just I love the fact that they were able to get that's a guy it's a second round if he's not if he's not dealing with an injury it's a second round linebacker right there and they got him in the fifth super excited about him I think that where he is, two things. Physically, he's better, much better. Mentally is the second thing. He is in a much better spot. He Last year, he's thinking about, okay, I, you know, I'm not having a lot of interaction with my teammates. I'm out here working with Britt Brown. I'm trying to figure all this stuff out. I think he's in a much better place mentally, and I think he's in a much better place physically. And I think that leads to, that leads to a better path going into training camp for him this year. Felt like he was a little bit. He was first of all, he was out there, which I don't. Nobody expected that. He looked a little bit stiff. That's not. But that's. I mean, why wouldn't you? If you had a neck and back surgery just a few months ago, I mean, like you're going to be that way. I think he's going to play a lot with a lot more reckless abandon, maybe about him. And and you're right. I mean, I didn't watch every game that Damone Clark played, but he was the guy that you look at and you're like. I thought LSU was down this year, yeah. you know, and they're like, yeah, but they got that guy. Like, yeah. that guy can get you two or three wins, and he probably did. I mean, he was so, so good. So his his second, third year, I mean, I think the sky's the limit for him. Can I say something yeah. real quick? It, you know, the thing with, with Cox is the one Jabril. when you when you worry, yeah, when you worry about Jabril, that's the one that I worry about because I don't have a good read on him. I don't know where Jabril Cox is. When you start to talk about the two LSU guys, I have an idea where Clark is. I don't have a, a, a thought about what we're going to see from Jabril Cox. I really am not sure about that. You know, when you look at the roster, and, and with Damon Clark, last year, I see what he did last year as a as just a head start. Like, it was just an extra bonus thing that he was able to get on the field the time that he did. This is going to be a big year for him, a big uh, training camp for him to actually show where he's at. But looking at the roster, and I know we're specifically talking about linebacker, but I think there are so many names on the roster that you feel good about as far as expectations, talent, promises. But at the same time, it's like, it, it's scary because a lot of them, you haven't actually seen it happen on the field. But you it, there's just so much young talent, good things being spoke about, good things that we're looking forward to watching. But you truly don't know just yet how each of them are going to turn out this year. Brian, you mentioned uh, Jabril Cox. Yeah. And here's my question. It, going back to last season – what were you guys hearing and seeing that may explain why Jabril Cox wasn't taking that next step like I think a lot of people expected him to make? I had a chance to talk to George Edwards. George Edwards and I worked together. We're really good friends. George is now the linebacker coach down in Tampa. And George was, I'm like, Jabril Cox. And he's like, he's like, listen, Brian, super talented kid. You know him from LSU. You know what he could do in coverage. You know how he can play and all that. And I said, well, what's holding him back? And he says, it just seems like with, with him, not seems like, it, it, was, it was a step forward, then two steps back. You know, it wasn't, they never, he was never able to capitalize on opportunities that he got. But was that, was that a mental issue? Was that there a, were things a that physical he, issue? Yeah, there were, things, there were things they were struggling with, with him picking some stuff up. You know, and these coaches are like that when they, when they feel like that you, when they're they're coaching you and you're not you're not seeing it the in the way of 
like, okay, I'm taking advantage of, I'm, you know, I'm, not, I'm making mistakes. I'm, you know, I'm, you know, coaches won't put you on the field. They just won't. And, and that's the thing. George says he's a super talented kid. He says, but, you know, we, we work with him, we work with him, we work with him. And every time you feel like that he was going to advance, something would happen. You know, and maybe maybe the injury part of it had something to do with it. But, you know, if, if you don't quite understand what the assignments are as far as, okay, this is what we need you to do, they're not going to put you on the field. And and also, and I love George Edwards as well, but, uh, you know, he was probably the guy that they called on when they said, do we want to sign this Anthony Barr guy? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, we, yeah. we probably do. And I, and I don't – and Anthony Barr was, was a good player. Um I don't. I don't think the term "progress stopper" is always a bad thing because anybody. I mean, Dak is a progress stopper to Cooper Rush and Will Greer, of course. I mean, that's that's just the way it goes. But I think in this particular case, you know, you, you feel more confident that Anthony Barr is going to kind of pick it up more than than Jabril Cox, and so that kind of also set him back a little bit too. But now he's not here. But you're right. If they wouldn't have, if Jabril Cox wasn't showing those signs that Brian yeah. was talking about, yeah. they wouldn't have signed Anthony Barr in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. So, question, Amber, I'll start with you. This def- I mean, this uh, linebacker group, is it better, worse, or the same as it was last year? And that's in- including everything. Obviously, they got a new coach. Uh, they've, they've got some different parts from from standpoint of maybe some of the, the depth at this position. Are they better, worse, or the same? I think a little better than the same. <laughs> I think, uh, no, I think it's a pretty solid group, but just there there are a lot of unknown questions because we haven't actually seen it, but there is talent there that you can work with. I'm really, really excited about Overshawn, and I haven't seen much of him just yet, but just what I saw from, like, the rookie minicamp and just him, uh, he looks good. Like, I'm excited to see he's quick, and I think he can – just bring a different spark to the linebacker position and what it's needed there. Uh, I feel pretty good about Leighton Vanderish, which I didn't two years ago, um, but he showed last year what he can still do. So I think uh, health-wise, he's okay. And, and just looking at the overall group, I do think there is talent to work with there. Um, I wouldn't say they're worse than what they were last year. I hope they find a spot for Overshown. I hope they do. I hope this is not move around, play edge, play this, play that. Maybe, oh, wait, you could be that nickel sub linebacker when I mean that. That's the, you know, the dime packages, mm-hmm. the, the nickel packages and stuff. It's very similar to what they do with Curse. Uh, so, you know, I, my hope is for him to come in and immediately hit the ground running, much like when, when Michael Parsons was a, was a rookie player here. They were throwing him into stuff. It was not too big. They were putting a lot of on the wagon. He was pulling the wagon, and, and he was just fine. I'm interested about Devin Harper because I think he can really, really, really run. And I, I think that he's one of those guys that, if given the opportunity, we could see him make plays. I am intrigued by Isaiah Land. When I watched him play there at Florida a and this guy has got some ability to rush. He's got some ability. He's got mobility. He's got some bend. He's got some – you know some athletic ability to him as well. I'm interested to see how they they use him. But overall, they need the the guys like Cox, Overshone, Harper, Land. They need two of those guys to step up and play. Mm-hmm. They really, really do. They don't need to be going backwards on that. If those guys can play special teams initially and then get in on some other stuff that they're doing, then that then this group will be a lot better than I think what we think about them right now. Yeah, and another thing too about you know the linebacker's best friend is usually a defensive tackle right in the middle, and you drafted a, a Mozzie Smith, Mozzie Smith, and then you know Gallimore, and 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 of course resigning Hankins and uh, Osa. Those guys right there, I think, are better are going to be better. And if that's the case, then I do think your linebackers are going to be better too. I mean, Mike Singletary, Ray Lewis, great middle linebackers. They had great defensive tackles in front of them too. So I and think, they talked about and that. They, as yeah. Well. And so that that's that right there will should help the linebackers. And I think the key is Clark. I think Clark, like Brian said, I think he is going to take that next leap. And if he can show that he was a second round pick, and, uh, and you know that could be one of the biggest deals. It could be one of the best fifth rounds 
because you got Deron Bland. Bland is him. a good fifth rounder. Well, right let's now. go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and Ridgeway was a good pick too. They probably yeah. j- they probably you know uh, left too early on him. But but they they just got into a roster situation with him. They was liked that him. Houston or Ridgeway? Which one was Washington. that? No, Washington. Washington. Yeah, he's Washington. And he's playing for them. Yeah. No, 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 I, I no, no. The player they switched out was it Washington? They switched out to oh, get him on the roster. Oh, oh or was oh, it James, Houston? Oh, I. Yeah, probably. It was a receiver. Yeah. It one of those receivers. I was thinking the team he yeah. went to Washington. No, no, he did. Yeah. And you like said Houston run. and Washington is like, I thought you were talking about the oh, cities. Oh, no, 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 no. You were talking no, about no, the actual no, players. The yeah. actual got players yeah. that the Cowboys. <laughs> Forgot. The, the, we got a Houston and we got a Washington. I should, yeah, I should yeah. have thought it better about that. But, yeah, they, they it was one of those wide receivers they were trying to get on and yeah. that kind of thing. I can't so, think yeah. of any other player in the history of the Cowboys like that. I'm sure there is. Yeah. Some David Boston, he City names. <laughs> All right, we're going to take our final break. We'll come back. Austin. We'll talk about the running Miles back Austin. position. <laughs> this is one that has uh, a lot of intrigue. I think it's probably one of the positions of most that has the most questions going into 2023. We'll do that when we come back. DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Want to use the Cowboys locker room's favorite products? Check out the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Playmaker, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The Playmaker includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word cowboys. The Jack Black Playmaker, 10 bucks, free shipping. SeatGeek has your back no matter what kind of fan you are. So whether you're a diehard fan or a don't really care fan, a we got them next time fan or we'll never win again fan, a here for the tailgate fan or a first one through the gates fan, SeatGeek not only makes buying and selling tickets easier than ever before, they made just about everything else easier too. So whether you're a here every week fan or haven't been here in years fan, SeatGeek has you covered. Download the SeatGeek app today. SeatGeek, your ticket to great seats. Hey, honey, can we talk? Of course. What's up? Well, I just thought you should know. I've been curious about the new Dr. Pepper strawberries and cream. (gasps) Have you felt this way a long time? No, I just think I'd really like the taste of Dr. Pepper swirled with layers of flavor. If you feel that way... I think you should try it, babe. It's amazing. I mean, you're amazing, too. (laughs) New Dr. Pepper Strawberries and Cream. The new flavor you deserve. Back to the break. Spanish soccer giants Real Madrid and FC Barcelona meet in Texas for the first time ever at AT AT&T Stadium as the leg of the 2023 Soccer Champions Tour. Don't miss your chance to see these storied rivals in action at AT AT&T Stadium on July 29, 2023. Tickets are on sale now at SeatGeek.com, the official Ticketing provider of AT and T Stadium. Welcome back. It is the final Real segment. Madrid. Good, good call. On that's that. what I would always heard is Real Madrid. That's not. That's not what you said. Real Madrid. She said right. it right. Yeah. No, she, she, said, she said it right. right. She, 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 let's just be clear. She, she said it right. She I, completely. She hit that. That's reason. why I handed it to Perfect. her. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Real Madrid. All right, let's talk about the running back position. Real Uh, trouble saying that word. Right. Welcome back to the SWBC Mori Studios at the Star. We're on the break, and uh, we're going through our 2023 offseason review. We talked about the linebacker position. Now we're going to talk about the running back position, and I think it has to start with Tony Pollard. Uh, It's interesting because he's going to be coming off surgery. What are the realistic expectations of him returning? Uh, Is this something you're expecting to see him in training camp? Is this something you may not expect to see him until the regular season? What are your thoughts on kind of where he is and and when fans can expect him to be on the field? Uh, I I expect him to be ready for training camp the first day of training camp and maybe even sooner than that out here. But um, I don't think they'll be pushing it. But I think he'll be out here. I mean, it was was broken leg or, I mean, 
broken fibula, tibia, but broken leg for the most part and, and a high ankle sprain. I mean, those are things that you should be you should be back from. So um, I, I think it'll be I think first day of training camp. I, I don't think there'll be that many limitations for him. No, I don't. You know, and the, the, you know, with Britt Brown and the job that they do with these guys, and the you know, and and how these players respond to to working out and stuff like that, I, I don't anticipate any any setbacks at well. But they're like Nick's talking about. They've they've always been overly cautious about these injuries and stuff like that. You know, working guys back in. So um, I think with Tony that. You know, he'll be back in there when they're ready to go. I don't know how much he'll really play during training camp or uh, excuse me, these preseason, pre-season games, yeah. the three games you have. But it'll give you a good opportunity. Ronald Jones, uh, Rico Dowdle, uh, you know, Malik Davis, Deuce Vaughn, those guys all need uh, the work. And you need to kind of figure out who's two and three out of this group, you know, and which one of these guys can help you potentially on special teams, the guys behind Tony Pollard there. See, I don't really know how to feel about it because – on one end, on one hand, the Cowboys gave him the tag for a reason. I mean, they wouldn't if they didn't feel pretty good about it. But at the same time, you got to remember when they gave Michael Gallup a contract, and last year he wasn't able yeah. to really do much. So that is in the back of my head of like, okay, good point. how good is he really gonna be once he steps on the field? We don't know because of the injury, and on top of that. Not that we didn't see it a couple of times last year when Zeke wasn't playing. We saw um, Pollard playing a full game at times. Uh, but I still don't know if he can do that week to week to week. Like, I don't, we haven't seen that just yet. So, and I'm not saying he's not capable of, I think he is more than capable of, but there are still those kinds of doubts in the back of my mind as to how. He's actually going to be able to perform this year. How Are you saying on the confidence factor of like you know because Gallup was dealing with some struggles like you know he felt like he was ready but he really wasn't ready. Are you saying more well, on the? Well, he still con- mentioned that it hurt him. It, it was his, uh, his. What was it? His knee. His knee. His he. I remember he just said not too long ago that right. his knee was hurting him all last year. So I'm just saying, and and you just don't really know. He oh, can no, be you're, out you're there trying, yeah. but. How is that really translating on the game? Like you can say you you feel good and all that, but you know your body you just you just don't ever really know until you're out there doing it. To her point, they can't have Pollard be Michael Gallup. They they can't oh, they, they, they can't have that. They can't have that where and and really nothing against Michael, but if you know you're not confident that you could perform to your level, and I think Gallup is Hopefully he's put a lot of these things behind him. But if he goes out there and he's not confident, Pollard's not confident, then that was boy, that was a big error on Dallas's part, giving him the uh, the, the franchise tag. Well, it was clear. Mike McCarthy said like one of the things that he wants this offense to do, he wants them to rely on the run a little bit more, and so that means you're putting your you're putting all the pressure on your running game at that point, and now that means by default that's going on Tony Pollard. So they need him to be ready. They need him to be able to play at his optimal level. Which brings up the question: How much of a hole was left by releasing? Zeke Elliott, because I know that I know we all I I can tell from our obviously our conversation over last year, we felt like it was at a point where for the money, it wasn't really making sense for the Cowboys anymore, certainly for the amount of money he was making. But how much of a hole when you talk about what he provided for this team, how much of a hole is left? I think you're going to find out on third and one up at the Meadowlands uh, against the Giants, a really good team week one of the season. You know, like, like who does that? Who performs that? And who takes – and maybe it's not even third and one, it's third and two. Because third and one, fourth and one could be a Dak situation if they want to go that that route. Um, and I'm not saying Pollard can't do that, but but that's what Zeke really provided. And so you know, I thought he got knocked a lot for his his uh, average per carry being down. But, because, but that happens when you're the guy that's on third and one and you're supposed to get one yard and you get it. That kills your average, but it also it extends the the, fir- the the sticks. And so, yeah. you know, he was doing that really well. That was his job, and he was scoring touchdowns too. That's twelve touchdowns. That's hard to that's hard to to, uh, to duplicate. So I can't we'll see. yeah, I can't remember the game. It was a game that was at AT and T. It might have been the Houston game, but there was a I'm in Washington maybe I don't know, but there was a time where they tried to run Pollard on the goal line like three times. And they finally had to put Zeke in to get the touchdown. 
you know, and I, I can't remember what game. I know it was coming down towards us in the press box, but it just like they hand it to Pollard, nothing. Hand it to Pollard, mm-hmm. nothing. Hand it to Pollard, nothing. Finally, it's hand it to Zeke off left tackle, touchdown, you know, and I think those are the kinds of things. I, I'm not saying – you know, Pollard is a can be a tough runner. He's not a small guy. I mean, he's a little bit shorter guy, but he's not a he's physically he's fine. But I think there is some of that too. You've got to figure out who is going to be that short yardage guy. And maybe you'll get better blocking too up front. Mm-hmm. Maybe you'll get a better guys like Schoonmaker and you know, maybe Ferguson, Hendershot and those guys. Maybe you get a little bit better point of attack blocking. But I do remember that game, and I just can't remember who the Cowboys were playing that day. And I'm sure somebody will tag me on this and say, oh, it was this game. But I remember they took Pollard out of the game, put Zeke in the game, and scored the touchdown. Those are the kinds of things I think you might miss. Yeah, probably unpopular opinion within the fanatic world, but I personally would feel better if Zeke was on the roster right now. Uh, Why? Just because I still see... I still saw value in him and what now what does that amount like equate to as far as contract uh, no 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 as oh, far okay. as like uh how you were split in the I, I think it worked out last year because again Tony Pollard can't do what Zeke was doing and Zeke can't do what Tony Pollard was doing so to me they were a pretty good combo and again money wise it makes sense I get it I agree with it, but at the end of the day, talent-wise, I think Zeke, you're, we're going to miss Zeke. I mean, I don't know how unpopular that really is. I think there are, there are fans that kind of feel that way, too, um, and, and think, well, just at a cheaper price. You know, they don't care about the money and all that. Yeah, right. But, but – the, the, the tricky part is going to be with the amount of gadget players that you have and how many of them are going to get to go to the games. You know, just chirping, uh, he's, he's going to be part of it if he's returning, you know, punts and, and kickoffs, even though that's maybe not even a thing anymore. But, um, but also, you know, Deuce Vaughn and where does he factor into this? And so how many backup running backs that don't play special teams are you really going to have and so i think that that's going to be the, the key but somebody has to replace that role would, on third well I'll, I'll ask this question and I, well go ahead you take your i, w- your I was just gonna say i was looking at everyone's weight because i was thinking i'm like who kind of has the same body type and stuff and that's the one thing like zeke was on here uh 225 pounds and then the the next heavier guy, bulkier guy, is Rico Dowell at uh, two fifteen. Yeah. yeah. So, because uh, wow. it led me to think, I'm like, who's gonna be getting those hits, 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 and how is how are their bodies gonna take those hits? What's Malik so, Davis? I would have thought he was higher than that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> two hundred and two. And frankly, I thought what? I could be Rico wrong. Rico Dowell's two fifteen, and and Malik is. Unless it's, ha- I don't know when was the last time we Dallas? updated our. I stuff. thought Ronald Jones was bigger than that. <laughs> Ronald, yeah. yeah, Ronald Jones. He's would be- listed at two oh eight. Two oh eight. So he's yeah. around that same two ten ish. But here's the, and, and that's the question for me. I think of of all the things you're looking at the running back position, the question really is what can you get from Ronald Jones? I mean, he was a guy that last year when he got to um, to Kansas City, I think most people expected he might be the starter. And by the time they finished training camp, he had been well, yeah, relegated yeah. way down the depth chart to where Seventh he was not pick, even. I mean, yeah. he got 17 carries last year. Yeah. Um, and 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 by the way, he's had throughout his career, he's pretty much consistently been a guy that's averaged more than four yards a carry. Yeah. So he could be. He's he got some ability. Well, he could very right? well be the guy. Right. I, he might be the guy that ends we, up being in that that role. We had this discussion about. There's rumor that Dalvin Cook is going to be let go by the Vikings. You know, and Dalvin Cook, if you know Dalvin Cook's history, he's he's a guy, maybe he's on the way down, but I don't know if you can invest two, three million dollars in Dalvin Cook, but it would be kind of interesting to have. I know Dalvin Cook, and you just go back and say, look at last year's games of who he played really well against. It was like really good against, he had 119 yards against Buffalo for 8.5 yards yeah. carry. He had 72 yards and 11 carries against Dallas for six and a half a carry, you know, to me, if you, I, and I don't think they're good. I don't think they would invest in Dalvin cook. I mean, a, a combination of what you're talking about with Dalvin cook, who can run and is tough and goal line player and catches the ball. Well, 
paired with Tony Pollard, I think would be a really, really good yeah. combination. Problem is, problem is, he's on the Minnesota Vikings, and we can't touch him. Oh, <laughs> but but I will say this: I knew that was coming. I will though. say this: I do think, though, again, if, if oh, I, what I, you're looking my to, fault. I didn't mean to. I, well, I'm sorry. If, if, I, if, no, you're good. You're my good. radio if, show brought him up. The one the Cowboys if, brought if him up. I brought him up. If on you're the, looking yeah. at, if you're looking <laughs> at what this team can be yeah. next year with what they have, yeah. I do think Ronald Jones should be able to maybe. Yeah. Fill that role of Zeke Elliott, and that's and what give they're going to try. And give you yeah. the very least yeah. that role, yeah. and maybe a little bit more, but at, at the very least, he should be able to do that. I would think. Yeah. My apologies. Well, guys. a lot, of, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people say that though. June first, you know, Zeke's money, that ten point one million, will yeah. come back onto the books, yeah. and so oh, they could get anybody that gets cut on June, you know, for other teams, but also. Remember that they need that money to sign at least one of these guys. Yeah, well, one of these digs. When you say, yeah, one of those digs. Guys, those yeah, guys are, are big money's CD. coming down the line here. Yeah. yeah, my experience of working with you guys was always when you ask the cap guys, like, "Man, you got cap space?" And they're like, "No, we don't." Yeah, they <laughs> no, we know. Don't. We got already... th- that money is already spent. Brian, don't yeah. even act like you can spend it somewhere else. I mean, you know, th- and when you really start thinking about it, you got the guys like Trayvon and CD that you think about. You got Micah that you mm-hmm. think about. What? I think gets lost in that conversation sometimes is you still got a new deal you're trying to do with Dak. You're trying to extend him. So there's a lot of money for these players that you're about to spend. You really can't afford that is a luxury. That would be a luxury to go and look at a running back type guy that could be released June 1st or whenever, right? That's a luxury. That's not something that you certainly would spend a, a, a really well, significant amount of money on. How much on. are you really all in for this season? Well, but the problem is, the problem is, you're, you're always going to be. Don't get me wrong. If if a guy got released, I'm not going to say who it is, but yeah. if a guy got released, not the guy. If I you're going to if about. you're going to give him a one year deal and he's willing to take a one year deal, yeah. absolutely, you got something to talk about there. But if you're talking a long term yeah. deal, now you're talking about really eating it again into that money that you have to save for these other guys that you well, really want to retain. They got something too. They have to do with Dak. You know that thing is. Yeah. Fifty-eight million dollar, you know, kind of a situation. I don't know. I threw fifty-eight, but it's over fifty million dollars for for a quarterback for so, a year. So, so real quick before we end, give me your your final take on running back. Are they better, worse, or the same as last year? I think they're worse right now. They're 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 super superstar player is hurt. And we'll see when he comes back. I think he'll be fine, but he is hurt right now. And then and then they got twelve touchdowns and almost a thousand yards in Zeke that they need to be re- replaced. Worse. I would have addressed it during the draft myself, and I, I think they thought more of, than Deuce. Yeah, but more than Deuce. Yeah. yeah, more than Deuce. I mean, yeah, <laughs> worse for sure. Yeah, I think this is one of the positions that uh, that that will be the most discussed throughout the season because there are so many questions about it right now. And unless something changes, unless there is more added to it, I think there will be some questions about how they how well it does, especially because it's going to be something the offense is trying to do more of. All right, we appreciate you guys joining us. We'll be back next week. Uh, I'll figure out what positions we will go after, and we will get these guys focused, and we will talk about that. Until then, for Nick Eatman, Brian Broaddus, and Amber Garcia, I'm Derek Eagleton. This has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?